Hey there everyone, this is the start to part two of my video tutorial on setting up a Microsoft SQL Server and connecting it to Spring MVC. So if you haven't seen the first half of the video, make sure you go back and watch that because that's where we actually get the SQL Server set up. This half of the video is just getting our Spring MVC application to connect to that server. So let's go ahead and get started. So go ahead and open up NetBeans. There's a few things that we'll have to do to make sure this connection works. And the first thing is to make sure that Maven knows about our Java JDBC connector for Microsoft SQL Server. So in our pom.xml, we're going to have to add a dependency. So you'll look for the dependencies uh, section. And in here, there's already two dependencies on the Spring Framework. And we're going to have to add a new dependency. So I'll add a tag dependency and a closing tag for dependency and within this new dependency entry I'm going to need a group ID and I'm going to need an artifact ID. So if you're not familiar with Maven essentially what it is doing is it's connecting to the Maven Apache.org repository and up there it has many different things that we can import into our projects. To give you an idea, I'll actually open up the repo. It's at repo.maven.apache.org. And if you just go uh, to the top level of it, we have Maven 2, and inside of Maven 2, we have all of these different, prod, uh, different frameworks that we can import into our project, essentially. And so we're only interested in one of them right now, and that's Microsoft, uh, Microsoft's JDBC connector which happens to be in com slash Microsoft. I already have it here, Microsoft SQL Server, and then MSSQL-JDBC. I'll make sure to have this link in the description as well. So if you go here, uh, you'll see that there's a 6.1.0 JRE, and in here, there's some JAR executables, which are what we need to be able to connect to our database which means we are going to need to include com Microsoft SQL Server as our group ID. So within group ID, we need com, and then instead of using slashes, I'm going to use periods. So com Microsoft SQL Server, and then within here, we need to specify what artifact ID we want to use. And the artifact ID that we will be using, if we go back to our Maven repo, we're in com Microsoft SQL Server, which is our group ID, and the only thing in here is MSSQL hyphen JDBC. So that's what we'll be using for our artifact ID. We could optionally specify a version, however, we're not going to worry about it. So we're just going to leave it blank, and it'll assume to take the most recent version, the most up to date version of this MSSQL hyphen JDBC for our project. So with that set up, we can make sure that that worked by going into our dependencies. And you'll see um, there's this MSSQL hyphen JDBC 610. If you have that, it's probably going to have a little icon next to it saying it's not there until you build. So go ahead and build your project to ensure that it works. So we got a build success, which means we were able to successfully download the dependency for the JDBC SQL connector, and now we are all set to begin writing the code we need to get this to connect to our database. So go up into your source packages, hello, greetings controller, and in here, we're going to write some code to set up a connection to our database. First, I'm going to need to import uh, org.java, I'm sorry, Java. SQL is all it is, java.sql.star. And this will import all the things that we need for Java SQL uh, code. So I'm going to write a public method that returns a connection, and it's going to be called get connection to DB. These aren't the best methods, and they all should be crammed into one thing, the greetings controller. But for the sake of this demo, uh, we'll just go ahead and put everything in here so it's in one place and easy to see. So first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to try to do something. And in the event that that fails, I'll catch any exception, E. And if I catch an exception, I'm just going to return no. 
So let's actually try to connect to this database. Essentially what we'll need to do is say connection con is equal to driver manager dot get connection. And then this is going to use three strings. We're going to use the third option. String one um, is going to be the URL and then string two is going to be our username and string three is going to be our password. So get connection and I'm going to put each one of these on a different line just so it's much easier to read. So this first string, this is the most complicated one and it's something that will require some internet searching if you're not watching it here but essentially what you do is you say JDBC colon SQL server colon slash slash and then here you need the name of your uh, database. So mine is Josiah PC, which is by default the name of my PC. And then I'll need some backward slashes and then SQL Express. If you're not sure what the name is of your database, you can go into your SQL Server and it should be right here. Josiah PC SQL Express. The only difference is you need to make sure that that backslash is two slashes and then you precede it with two slashes in front. Now, all you have to do for these two strings are specify the username and the password that you will use to log in. As you recall, we created the standard user, that's his username, and you selected some sort of password here for it. I chose uh, password1, I believe is what I chose. So stand standard user password1. And this, once I have a semicolon, and then I return it, this will return a connection to our database. So let's go ahead and test out this connection and make sure that we actually have it working. I'm going to, in our greeting method, just make a connection test connection is equal to get connection to database. And assuming that this works, we should, when we hit this breakpoint here, uh, have a test connection. So I'm going to debug this project. And now, and now that it's started, I'll go online, go to localhost 8082 slash greeting, and we hit our breakpoint in NetBeans. And if we look at our test connection, we have a connection, and we can read some of the properties here, but I assure you that this is going to be the connection to our database. So it is, in fact, working. We're not using it yet, but it is, in fact, working. So I can continue this and we should get the same output that we had before. This service should work exactly the same as it has in the past, but it is establishing a connection to our database. So how do we actually use this connection? Well, we are going to have to write another method which is actually going to query our database. So I'll make another public um, void method. Actually, nope, this will return a string because we're going to assign a value in our model with the string that we pull from the database public string and it's going to be get greeting and it's going to require a connection con and now using this connection we are going to be able to query our database get a greeting and return it from this method and then we'll put that greeting into our model and send it on over to the view so let's go ahead and write the body of this First, we're going to need a statement. I'll call it STMT. For now, I'll set it to null. And we are going to need a string query. And this is going to be set to what we want to actually execute in our database. And so an easy way to write these, if you want to test them out, is to actually write them in SQL Server Management Studio. So you can have um, this open on the side and write your query. So I'm going to select top one star from greetings. Just going to highlight this row and execute it. I don't want to accidentally start a transaction or insert. I'm just going to execute what I've highlighted. And if I do this, I'm going to get my ID and my greeting. 
Notice it did change a little bit, and that's just because I was messing around with some settings and removed a row and then re-added a new row. But this is essentially what is returned from this query, so I know it works. I'll copy and paste that directly into my query string here. Then I'm going to need to try to actually query the database. So I'll put a try, and then I'll set my statement equal to my connection.create statement. Then I will get a result set rs and set that equal to stmt dot execute query and I'll pass in my query. Assuming that this works, I can say rs.next, which will get the first item from this query. Or I'm sorry, it'll actually go, yes, the first item from this query. And then I'll return rs.getString and I want to get the greeting column. So this result set would be populated with the entire list of rows, but since we just said top one, and our database right now only has one row anyway, this rs.next is going to take us to our one and only row, and then it's going to say rs get string greeting, so it's going to look for the greeting column, and return whatever the value is of the cell that's in row one column greeting. And if this doesn't work, I will catch my SQL exception. And if that happens, then I will just return an empty string. So now we're about ready to see if this will actually work. So first thing I'm going to do, and you should always be doing this in your programming, is checking for my connection being null. So if test connection is equal to null, then I'm going to need to do something Otherwise, I can actually go ahead and query the database. So just recall that I said in my catch that if this connection, get connection to the database doesn't work, it will return null. So I, that's why I need to check it. If that happens, then I'm going to set my string, my greeting string, uh, equal to an error message such as no connection. However, if I actually have a connection, then I can set my greeting equal to get greeting with my test connection. Mm -hmm. Then, instead of giving my model a name attribute, I'm going to give it a greeting attribute, and then I'm not going to take in a parameter anymore. I'm just going to take in a model, and then I'm going to give it the value greeting. So now my greeting method just takes in a model, connects to the database. Assuming we successfully create a connection, it's going to use that connection to get my greeting, which is stored in my database. And then it's going to put that value that it got from the database into the model in the value of greeting, which means we need to update our HTML page, greeting.html, and this, instead of getting the value name from the model, we need to get the value greeting from the model. Now let's go ahead and build this and see if it works. Again, I'll go to localhost port 8082 slash greeting, and if I query this, hello, hello, new user to exclamation point, exclamation point, that's a little funny looking, and that's just because in our HTML page, I did not remove where it says hello, comma, and I did not remove the trailing exclamation point. So I just want to say whatever is in that greeting. I'll save that. I will stop my service, rebuild it, and then I'll run it again and see if that looks a little bit better. Now that it's built, I can go back to my page and this should just return exactly what was stored in our database. Hello, new user 2. So our website is connected to our database and is able to correctly query from it. There's only one last thing that we should be sure to do, which is just good practice. Once we're done with our connections, we want to close those connections. So we will try and call testconnection.close. And then if that doesn't work, 
we're not going to worry about it uh, since most likely it was just closed before we got to it. So we'll catch that SQL exception and then just do nothing. And that's it. We have our Spring MVC application connecting to a SQL database. Thanks for watching.